What's up, Steam Team, and welcome back to the channel. As promised, we are still doing 30 days of Christmas. So, today, I got some stuff for y'all that's just like, hey, this is the get down and dirty when it comes time for moving. But first off, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been booking calls, y'all. The reason why I was so late yesterday in the last two days for posting these videos was because I was completely booked up between... Uh, the Steam Team page and the um, my own personal uh, life coaching and consulting company that I recently, well not recently, but that I recently started focusing on. So, um, thank y'all so much. Like y'all don't even know um, how much that means to us to for you guys to be willing to book a call with us. Like it's been so much fun. Uh, talking to all of you guys about your dreams. It makes me feel so warm inside because I remember when moving to Colorado was only a dream for me and we were able to make it come to pass. So thank you so much for just letting us be a part of your dream. Um, I do want to let you know uh, from from the last couple of people that I've talked to, I added some services on um, to our call. Um, a lot of calls have run over because, uh, which is fine with me. I love talking to y'all. A lot of calls have run over because uh, I realize that you guys want more than just to chat about moving to Colorado. You guys actually want um, like extensive. Some of y'all are really, really planners like I am. So I added some services. Um, I've added a strategy call, which is actually a three call process where we can actually help you strategize. And I also added another call that's an hour long versus the 30 minutes that we have. Just if you already kind of have a plan and you're like, I'm stuck in this area and that area then I'm able to help you with that and have more time. Um, a lot of times if I'll run over, but the problem is I've been having calls back to back to back and all my slots have been filled up until this point. Like I just started having openings. Um, we got openings on the 4th and 5th going forward. But from when I opened it, y'all, seriously, some people who are not even really like subscribed have booked calls with us, which I find weird. But hey, do you, baby. So, yeah, um, I'm just sorry that all of the, the content up until this far has been late. So, I'm doing better at doing it on time. For those of you who don't know, I have my own channel that I'm working on about my journey to walking off my job and doing what I love to do and what makes me happy. Uh, so, that's like a whole other thing, too, because I'm also doing 30 Days of Christmas over there. Anyways, let's get into this video. So, today, we're going to talk about... Um, a lot of different things. Sorry. We're going to talk about, number one, if you have government aid, how do you transfer that? Do you meet the income requirements? Things like that. Then we're going to talk about transferring your license. Uh, a lot of people think it's super simple, and in Colorado, it's not super simple. Uh, and then we're going to talk about car registration. So these are some key things that I think people let fall through the cracks because they don't realize the logistics um, of doing this and as, as part of getting here. So, first off, government aid, like, I know a lot of y'all can be like, oh my God, it's so rich that she's talking about government aid. Listen, baby, over, uh, I think it's like 70% of our country is unemployed right now or not making the same amount of money that they used to make. People are on government assistance. And if you're not on government assistance, that's great for you. But especially if you're coming from a cheaper state, you might find yourself in a position where you might need a little bit of help, okay? And that is the reason why I looked into these. I wasn't, we moved here, I didn't use any government um, assistance, but I had in the past because I was a teen mom. So I just wanted to make sure that if I fell on hard times that my kids wouldn't be starving. And you need to make sure too. So let's talk about that. So for food stamps, 
I'm going to give y'all the income restrictions for food stamps. I know in a lot of impoverished like states, it's different income brackets, but I need y'all to understand the cost of living is higher here, so you can make a little bit more money. However, you can, you, honestly, you don't make enough money to survive if you're at the minimum of these. So you're going to have to do some other stuff as well. So for one person, you can make $6,558. Uh, for two people, you can make two. You can make $22,412. For three people, you can make $28,236. For four people, you can make $34,060. For five people, you can make $39,884. And for six people, you can make $45,708. If you keep on increasing the amount of people, you need to add $5,800 per year. Okay, that sounds like a, a lot, but if you think about six people, that means my whole family can only make 3000 About I think it's like $3,500 a month. Sis, that's not a lot. My rent is $1,558. So, I just want to let you know that. Um, now, if you fit these income requirements, you will also qualify for either Medicaid or CHIP. So, with that being said, it depends on if you're on the lower or the higher, um, you know, part of this income whatever and for you to get medicaid or chip chip is i feel like a great resource for lower income families that are not necessarily impoverished but can't afford insurance and it's not expensive so uh the big thing i want you guys to understand is you cannot transfer an active food stamp medicaid or chip case listen to me you cannot transfer them that is very important because of two things. Number one, for a lot of people, if you're moving and you don't have your food stamps active, that could mean that you are going without food when you're in the moving process, which is not good. So let's talk about how you could get around that. The first thing I need you to do, sis, or bro, because there's some single fathers out there that have to use government aids and salute to you because their mama should be there just like the father should. But anyways... What I need you to do, sis, is I need you to download your state's digital app for government assistance. So in Texas, I forgot what it's called in Texas. It's got a little apple on it. I don't know. But every Health and Human Services has, the state has some type of app that you can download. And so what that's going to do for you is allow you the amount of time to report your change without going without food, okay? So, in almost every single state, but I need you to check your state and how long they give you to report a change. So, in many states, Colorado, I think there's only one state, and I think it's like Alaska or something, that Colorado does not accept your SNAP benefits. So, you can actually use those SNAP benefits as you travel to go to grocery stores to feed yourself, to feed your children, so on and so forth. Um, and then when you get here, you have to report a change for most places within 30 days. So what I need you to do, sis, is I need you to budget those food stamps so that you're not starving while they close out that case. Because on to my next point, in order for you to reapply and receive benefits in the state of Colorado, there is no emergency food stamps. Listen to me. There's no emergency. So with that being said... I need you to budget correctly so that you can have food during the 30-day process of this turnover. Now, real quick, sis, or bro, you need to be able to prove that you have already closed the case in your previous state or you will not get awarded benefits. So the reason why you need this digital uh, source is because what's going to happen is once they close your case, they're going to upload it to that app and you can use that to print out or to email or whatever they do in the state that you're going to if you're not going to Colorado to prove that you do not have an active case in another state. Do not try to beat the system. You will go to jail. <laughs> so just do it properly. Don't lie and say that you don't have benefits in another state when you do. Once you have reported the change and they've closed your case, you no longer have benefits in that other state. So that is how you know you don't have benefits once the state is closed. So moving on to Medicaid. The same thing applies with Medicaid. So one of the big things I need y'all to do, regardless if you got government aid or not, is take yourself and your children to make sure you are up to date on all of your yearly checkups. 
Why is this important? Because, number one, if you have government aid for the purposes of this video, you're going to have a small bit of time where your children are without benefits. I think it's like a two-week period of time. However, don't fret. If you need to go to the emergency room or anything like that, they will backdate it so that you don't have medical bills. But another reason why I said it's important, y'all, is because, let's be honest, it's going to take you some time to find doctors and especially pediatricians that you trust with your children. I still don't have a set pediatrician because I haven't found anybody that really, the vibe just makes me feel like I trust you with my kids. I'm just being honest. And I'm really, really big on picking people uh, that I feel like I can trust. That's just how I am. I was like that. I just found a, a gynecologist. That's how, you know, not saying I didn't get my, my my yearly checkup, but I just found one and I was like, okay, this is my doctor. You know what I mean? Same thing for Trey. We still haven't found a doctor that is. we feel like for his asthma, it's like, okay, we trust you with my life. I'm serious about doctors. Some people not do you. Okay, moving on. So if you have TANF, which is basically welfare, they call it TANF now. Um... I need you to understand that that is a federal, that's a federal uh, program. So you can transfer that, but you do need to speak to your caseworker about your plans to move because there is a process to it. So make sure that if you're going to move, that you understand the process, and you understand either the change or the lack thereof in the amount of money uh, that you will be getting every, um, every month. So understand that and then also I need you to understand that there's a difference in how much money you can make once you receive the stipend, which quite honestly says you, you can hustle and make that because it's like $2. So anyways, that's that on that. So if you're coming from a like East Coast state, most likely your benefits will likely either stay the same or go up a little bit. If you're coming from a, a Southern state, then your benefits will most likely go up because food is terribly expensive here. Not as expensive as like uh, New York. But for real, Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, they are known for taking all damn day to send your stuff to another state. So FYI. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about transferring your license, which seems like a very easy task. But it's not. Because here in Colorado, you need two forms of ID. Those forms of ID... The first one has to be some type of identification from your previous state. So it could be an ID, it could be a driver's license, like that, so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to your second identification, it could be a passport, a social security card, or a birth certificate. Now, hear me loud. It cannot be a county birth certificate. It They only take a state one. Why is that important? Now, if you're from, you know, some small state, that's not important. But if you're from a state that's highly populated or very large, this is very important for a state like Texas, for a state like California, for a state like New York, where they predominantly give us county birth certificates. If you're from Texas and you got a Harris County birth certificate, you're not going to get your license here. You need to go to the Vital Statistics website and order your birth certificate because if you plan on using that as any type of identification, it's not valid in the state of Colorado. It has to be a state of Texas drop me birth certificate. That is so important, y'all. It took me so long to get my license here because I didn't have uh, my birth certificate. It, it was it was because I it was just I had my social. But because I was changing my last name, it was a whole ass process. So uh, for y'all that don't know, I'm lazy. I've been married for 10 years, just turned my name to my husband's name last year. I don't care what y'all say about me. Mind your business, period. <laughs> so um, I, I feel that it needs to be done regardless because you just don't want to be somewhere where your birth certificate isn't valid. I just don't feel comfortable about that. Anyways. The last thing we're going to talk about is car registration. Um, so, for example, if you're coming from Texas where we have those little stickers that go on our window, on the outside of our windshield. I think that's the windshield window. Um, they don't use those here. So, everything is digitally registrated, right? Listen, y'all, you have 90 days from your date of arrival in this state to get your car properly registered, right? Now, let me tell y'all this. 
I don't know how they gonna know that you've been here for 90 days. I'm just giving you the information. So, if you are from Texas, baby, I'm just gonna be honest and let you know I wrote that Texas sticker for a little while. Because it's super expensive to register a car here. It's like $300. So, when you look on the website on Google, it's going to tell you, oh, $75 for a car and $90 for a truck. Bullshit. Period. Because they got all of these taxes associated with registering your car here that we don't have in Texas that drives up the price. Now, I'm not sure, you know, as years go on, um, how, how this goes, but I know it's dead ass expensive. It was almost $300 for the car and even more for the truck. So I need y'all to count that in y'all budget and I need y'all to plan, uh, to register y'all's vehicles. Okay. So that's that on that. I'm right at 15 minutes and two seconds. I have to do a video for my other channel. I got five calls today and I still got to go out here and work this gig economy. So Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, let me know. Comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. That really helps us. Um, and then, again, the if you want to book a call, it is down below in the uh, description box. If you want to give us love tokens, our PayPal is down there. Our Cash App is down there. And if you just want to drop us a good comment, that's as good as cash for me. So, I love y'all, and y'all have a great day.